This is the model used in Boundy. I'd just like to show you the object to start with, the, f the front and top. Okay. Okay, this is the side that's been chosen by Boundy as a front elevation, the front view. Um, as you can see how it lines up there. The front view on its own is not sufficient to manufacture the, the item from because it doesn't show any details in the third dimension. For instance, it doesn't show that that face is actually further back than this face. Um, it could be, from looking at that, it could be the other way around. That face could be in front of it. So we need to show some other views. Here we show a view of the left-hand side of the, of the model. If I rotate the model around, you can see that that's what is seen from the left. So the left view is shown on the left. I've projected. All I had to do to construct this left view was, first of all, I projected all the heights across from the front elevation, and I measured off the width. So all I had to measure was the width on that particular object. Here we've got the right view, which is just a case of rotating this towards the right. And you can see the right view of the model and the, the right view on the drawing. So the right side of the model is shown on the right. Very infrequently, we may need to show the rear view of the model. So that is taken, in this particular case, from, the, from rotating from the right view. It just looks like an L shape. Similarly, a top view is shown above the front elevation just by rotating the object through like that. You can see that I've projected the widths from the front elevation up onto the top, top view. So all I had to measure was the vertical dimensions. A view of the bottom, which doesn't give a lot of detail, is shown below. It's just a case of rotating the model through like that. It's just a a straight rectangle. There are, in fact, three views are all that's actually required to fully depict this object so that it can be ma manufactured. I've got the front elevation. I've shown the view from the left-hand side in this particular case because it shows a little bit more detail than a view from the right-hand side. I've also shown the top view because it shows this detail. If you remember, the bottom view was just a, a pure rectangle. If that was dimensioned, that would be adequate for the, for the component to be manufactured. As I mentioned before, all the heights from the front elevation are projected across onto the side view, so I only had to measure the width. All the widths of the front elevation were projected on up to the top view, so I only had to measure the vertical dimensions. But we can also set up a projectioning system. That means that any the the dimensions measured in the vertical dimension in the vertical direction on the plan view can be transferred straight onto the side view, or vice versa. So we only have to do that measurements once. To set the projection system up, we take the we take uh, we project across from the two outside dimensions of the of the top view horizontally, the two outside dimensions of the side view vertically. Where they intersect, we draw a 45 degree line through. That's the setup for the projection system. 
any other details we need to we need to transfer from one, from one view to the next uh, we just transfer along hit the 45 degree line and drop down or vice versa. In this particular case we've only got one piece of detail so it hardly seems worth setting the uh, projection system up but in most technical drawings there will be a host of detail that we'd want to transfer across. Okay. I mentioned before about setting up the um, about the choice of front elevation. The front elevation bound he chose was, was that view. If we'd have chosen this view instead, as, as the side view, we would end up with a very tall plan view. And this gives a lot of restriction in this space here. To get that all onto, onto the page, pages tend to be fairly horizontal in layout, the, the longer than the, the tall. We've got a restriction here. It makes it difficult to put, to insert much in the way of dimensioning into that space. Finally, the projectioning symbol is based on a truncated cone. We accept that as a, as a front elevation, looking in that direction. The end elevation is always chosen, so we end up with two concentric circles. Okay, we've got the front elevation there. We rotate that round to have two concentric circles. The two concentric circles are shown near to the narrow end of the truncated cone. The same symbol could be shown the other way, other way up. So the truncated cone should be shown, could be shown with the the narrow end to the left. In which case, we've got the the two concentric circles shown on the left hand side. It's shown in the title block in that position. That depicts that we've got a third angle projection drawing. <laughs>